This is Sebastian Metal Martinez, MMA News, here with Danish UFC veteran Martin the Hitman Campman. So, we are here for UFC Copenhagen, and this is a day that I'm, I'm sure you must have been dreaming of way back in the day. How does it feel to finally see the UFC come to Denmark? Oh, it's great to uh, have UFC come to Denmark. You know, obviously, when I was fighting, I think uh, staying active, it wasn't as uh, realistic with the UFC in, the, in Denmark, but uh, now when it's finally here, I think it's, it's great, and it uh, brings a lot of uh, exposure to all the, the whole MMA community as a whole, obviously, and uh, from mainstream media and a lot of sources that normally doesn't cover MMA. So I think it's great, it's very positive for uh, MMA sport in Denmark. And as you mentioned, it's probably a bit more realistic now that the sport has been able to be become a bit more established. Like, I'm sure it would have been nicer back in the day when you were still competing, but do you feel like maybe this is the right time now that there are like the established stars and it, it ha does have more of a mainstream appeal? Well, MMA is still a, very much a niche in Denmark, you know, mm. it's still pretty much uh, soccer and handball and mm. a couple of other sports that takes all the attention, but I'm, I'm, I'm just glad that uh, MMA is, it's keep, continues to grow, you know, and uh, the um, people training and the, the opportunities to get fights, uh, everything is growing, sports growing, and uh, now uh, a great combination with the UFC comes Denmark and uh, I only wish we would have more Danish fighters on the card, but yeah. uh, so far Dalby and uh, obviously Mark who I'm coaching uh, is on the card, and yeah, of course I'm very happy uh, to see that uh, you know the Danish fighters do well. Yeah. Obviously, of course, Mark, because I'm, I'm coaching him, so I'm, yeah. I'm a little biased on that one. But uh, also Dalby, he's still really good. Mm -hmm. I was hoping to see more guys. But, uh, and is there any part of you that sort of wishes like? If only started a little bit later, if they would have come a little bit earlier, then you could have been like, you know, the one fighting in the card. Oh, you can do a lot of what ifs. So the, what ifs, no good. You can what if your whole day. But uh, yeah. I, uh, I, I'm very uh, happy with uh, some of my accomplishments in UFC. I moved to the US, you know, back then. Uh, it was very small and amazing in Denmark. So I moved to the US and I. Uh, I was really active and did most of my career there, but I was also fighting overseas and uh, some of the English shows and Australian shows. And uh, back then, uh, UFC continues to grow to other markets, and now I'm, I'm, I'm glad UFC is coming to Denmark. You know, it's, it's mm -hmm. very positive for my side. And you know, you were kind of like a pioneer of like the Nordic MMA in the UFC. You kind of were the first one to really establish yourself there. What would be your message to the up and coming, you know, Nordic and Scandinavian fighters who were trying to do what you did back in the day? Um, you know, I think uh, staying focused and, and, and uh, putting all your effort into uh, into achieving your goals is the uh, main thing. You know, I, I moved across the world just to pursue the dream of, of uh, fighting and, and doing well in the UFC. So you got to come with some sacrifices to, uh, to do well, but um, you know, staying focused and, and staying dedicated. You know, that, that's that's definitely a big part of. Uh, coming far in, in the sport, you know, because the competition keeps getting fiercer and fiercer, you know. There's a lot more UFC events now than when I was competing, so there was more often events, so that means they've grown to their stable of, of fighters, but it's still, the competition just keeps getting uh, more and more fierce, and, and the guys are getting really tough, so uh, you got to stay focused, you got to continue to improve every day, and you got to gotta have a plan and have a good setup, and you got to, you know, go for seek inspiration, you know, that's what I did. I, even when I, before I went to the U.S., I, I went to Sweden to train and uh, did training camps in uh, Brazil and, and Thailand, you know, and I think all that uh, helped me improve. And you've got your finger on the pulse of Danish MMA and you were, you know, you're here coaching Mark Matson, who, you know, did kind of a similar thing as you. He, you know, moved to, decided to pack his bags, go to Las Vegas and not come back until he got the UFC contract. Now, he didn't have to wait perhaps as long as... Uh, he was anticipating, but how do you feel about his uh, progression? Because you know he's got a bit of a different background from everybody else. He's already done the big competitions. He's done the you know Olympic games and stuff like that. How do you feel about his transition from Olympic wrestling to MMA and the uh, the opportunities and the potential that he's got in the UFC? Oh, he's got a, such a great potential. You know, and ever since he uh, started moved, shifted his focus from wrestling to full time to MMA, you know, he's really you know, leaps and bounds, and, and he's, he's just a stud of an athlete, you know, and uh, we're a good learner, so it's a pleasure to work with him, but most of all, you know, he's just got such a strong mentality and a dedicated mindset, you know, mm. so uh, I'm really looking forward to watching fight here on Saturday, of course, and everything we've been working on is obviously, you know, filling those small gaps, and, and really he's just got such a strong background from wrestling, which is, you know, tremendous, uh, and, you know, obviously big strength and resource, but 
uh, we have to fill in the other gaps uh, of this MMA game, but the whole time it's, it's all about uh, driving the fights towards uh, areas where he's the strongest, you know. We're not uh, trying to make him uh, into a fancy uh, taekwondo kicker or whatever. Yeah. You know, we can, we're adding small things to his, uh, his um, skill set, but uh, we're trying to build it into complementing what he's already extremely good at, you know. Okay. And so, so as I mentioned, you you know you've got a pretty good view of Danish MMA. Who would you predict to be the next Danish fighter to get signed to the UFC? Um, one guy I was actually expecting to see in the fight card was uh, Mass Cornell because uh, he was already had a stint in the UFC, and uh, I didn't think he showed uh, you know he could have done better than the second time around. And in his last couple of fights in Cage Wars, he looked really really sharp and um, I thought he would uh, have the shot to come back in but uh, hopefully we'll see him in the future. And looking at his fight card, obviously we, we know you're very excited about the co-main event uh, between uh, uh, Madsen and uh, Belardo but uh, looking at the rest of the card, do you think there's any like sleeper fights that you know fans should be sure not to miss? Um, I mean I'm a little biased here but obviously yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm always uh, I'm also looking forward to watching uh, Dalby against uh, Oliveira. Mm -hmm. Oliveira is, uh, is one of the guys that I really enjoy watching you know mm -hmm. always walking the ring with a big smile on his face and, and dancing you know so uh, and I like to watch his fights it's always uh, you know crazy craziness always incurs in, the, in wild fights and uh, Dalby is, uh, is, is really looks sharp in his last one, so that's definitely a fight that I'm looking very much forward to. And also, of course, I'm biased because he's a Danish guy, but, yeah. but it's actually uh, two very good performers that I think can make for a tremendous fight. And, and Jack Holmes, the main event. Yeah, also yeah obviously. Fight, yeah. Well, I'm sure everyone watching this has got to see the main event. So. Yeah. Uh, so things have changed a little bit in the UFC and MMA since uh, since you were active. It feels a little bit as nowadays it's going more sort of the entertainment money McGregor thing, where it's like it's a lot about more about trash talk and image and things like that. And some people are okay with it, some people can't stand it. Where do you how do you feel about it? Um, I think uh, I always embraced more the the sports aspect of the of the, the sport you know yeah but the uh, reality is uh, UFC is, is a business that's the reality so uh, if you want to you know have the opportunities and and uh, do the best to grow your fan base and stuff like then, then the promotional side is also a big part of it so that's just reality so you can you can cry about the way it is or you can you know do something about it you know you don't have to, to change your appearance you don't have to start talking trash if you're not comfortable with it, you know. GSP is uh, one of the most uh, respectful, you know, athletes and, and he's very popular and he's he's come that far by not ever think, talking any kind of trash. So, you know, you can do it your own way, just be yourself, but definitely promotional side is also a, a big uh, aspect of the sport because it is also a business and it's show business. So, um, obviously you're going to get uh, better opportunities if you can uh, promote yourself and, and it's... Uh, yeah. Cost business. Yeah, absolutely. And when you look back at your career, were there any fights or any fighters that's like the one that got away, one that you know, any particular fighter who you think like, damn, I wish you would have fought him before before I retired? Well, obviously, like I just mentioned, you know, a long time of my career when I was fighting the welterweight, the GSP was the, mm -hmm. the kingpin, you know, and, and for good reason. He's a tremendous athlete, and I always enjoyed watching fights. So for me, the goal was to fight him. Unfortunately, he never uh, materialized, but mm -hmm. uh, that would have been in fight. I, I, and speaking of GSP, a lot of people are talking about that if he does come back for a fight, it's going to be against Khabib. It's you know, the fight that a lot of people are talking about that will be like the big super fight. How do you break down that fight and, and who do you think would win? I think it's a very, very interesting fight. You know, I think uh, definitely if someone's going to beat Khabib, it's going to be someone that can, uh, that can you know, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him in the wrestling. And, and, and GSP is... is uh, Really tremendous athlete. He's very good uh, game planner, high five IQ. You know, so uh, man, that, that's a tough fight uh, mm -hmm. to call. You know, uh, I'd love to watch it. I'd love to watch it, and uh, I'd love to watch someone fight Khabib that be able to put him on his back and they put him in some tough positions. You know, a couple of, lately he's been looking really, really uh, dominant when he fought Dustin Poirier. But um, it's got to be someone that can you know, take him down and uh, take him into some spots that he's not used to. And it was either tonight or yesterday that uh, it was announced that the UFC is close to finalizing the fight between Kamaru Usman and Colby Covington, you know, your former about division. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's about time, right? Uh, and what about that fight? You know, who do you have uh, coming out as a, on top of that one? 
man, that's another really exciting fight, you know. Uh, another tough one. Yeah, you're giving me some call tough ones to pick, you know. I don't know if I uh, got to pick a winner, but uh, definitely, I think it comes down to uh, who can put the other guy on the back, you know, mm -hmm. and, and make him work for there, you know. Covington really has a tremendous uh, cardio and output, you know, we saw it in his last fight. Yeah. So I think that's definitely a, a big factor in a five-round fight, you know, so I don't think we've seen uh, Usman get uh, pushed that much, you know, he really put the pressure on uh, Woodley in his last fight and um, took him down, but I want to see him also against a guy like Covington and see if he can, you know, stop his takedowns. I, I think wrestling is definitely going to be a big part, obviously, yeah. the, uh, of that fight, you know, but I, I look forward to it very much, you know, it's two guys that also I know much about. And uh, as I mentioned before, you were sort of like a pioneer in Nordic MMA, and then <clears throat> as of, in the last couple of years, we've had Gustav Son, who was sort of carrying the torch for for Scandinavian Nordic MMA. He's now retired, but it seems like he's been a little bit uncertain. He's you know openly said that he misses it. How do you feel? Would you like to see him back, or do you think that maybe you know if you make the decision to to step down, you should stay? Around? I don't think I'm in a position to tell him what to, to do, you know, he's, he's really uh, been a tremendous uh, athlete to watch and also a guy I really enjoyed watching uh, his fights and he, he's had some amazing UFC fights, so whatever he decides to do, you know, uh, I say go for it, you know, but uh, I'm sure he can still uh, be very competitive in the UFC if he chooses to uh, fight, but you got to have the, you got to have the fire, you got to have the passion to, to go in there again, you know, and, uh, if you don't have that, I don't think you should. Uh, I don't think you should do it. But if you can uh, find it again, then I'd love to see him fight. Yeah. All right. Well, until then, we've got Saturday in UFC Copenhagen. Uh, there's going to be lots of fans watching here, of course, and then for some fans across the world, it'll be the first time maybe seeing some of these local towns. Certainly, seeing Mark Madsen. I'm sure there's not a lot of American and MMA fans who are familiar with him before. What's your message for the fans watching this event, both new and old? <laughs> Well, um, message for new fans or what? what, what yeah, for, for all of them. I mean, this is a debut event in Denmark. What should people expect? What should they look oh, out for? Uh, hopefully, watch out for fireworks. I would love to see more Danish guys on the card, but definitely look forward to the Dalby's fight with uh, Oliveira. It's got you know fireworks written all over, and of course, keep an eye out for the co-main event with uh, Mark Madsen, who I'm coaching. So, no biased here, but uh, he's a uh, tremendous athlete. He's a uh, heavy hitter. He's uh, quickly evolving. You know, he's only focused on. It made full time for a very short period, but he's really uh, lifted his level mm. and leaps and bounds a lot, and, and he's going to continue to evolve. So I think he can make it, really make it uh, far in the UFC, and I'm uh, you know, glad to be part of his journey. All right, well, you heard it here first from Danish UFC veteran Martin the Hitman Campman. Thank you very much, and uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you later on the week. Thank you.